Medical Skills Videos in Veterinary Medicine is a collection of real veterinary procedures performed on canine and feline patients. The procedures are diverse and advanced, including bone marrow aspiration, arthrocentesis, epidural anesthesia, and many more. These are procedures that are routinely performed in referral practices and university hospitals. The value of the videos is to demonstrate an effective way for completing the procedure correctly and safely. This is important for students, newly graduated veterinarians, house officers, and any veterinarian who wants a visual reminder of the do's and don'ts of these procedures. The videos are designed with specific strengths in mind. First, they are brief but thorough. The average duration of a video is seven minutes, and each one covers the procedure from start to finish. The viewer can pause and rewind to review key aspects as desired. Second, the videos are highly formatted. Initially, preparatory information is presented, including indications, necessary materials, and anesthetic requirements. Then, the procedure itself is shown step by step. Emphasis is placed on key moments, especially where common errors are so well known to specialists, but might not be obvious to the newcomer. When fluid is flowing well, remember what many of us have learned the hard way during this procedure. Don't be greedy. If the fluid has stopped flowing, stop aspirating and consider the procedure done for that joint. And then the video concludes with important post-procedure information, including alternatives and pearls of wisdom. Third, there are three sources of information. The visual video footage, the voiceover for audio description, and animation that demonstrates important additional features. Fourth, the medical and scientific content of the material is as rigorously created and edited as in any veterinary textbook. There may be more than one way of performing a medical procedure, but the viewer can be assured that the way that is shown is tried and true and has been in the hands of board-certified veterinary specialists for years. After watching and listening to a video, the viewer should have a level of understanding for how a procedure is performed that significantly supplements any book chapter journal article, or one-time demonstration. Pericardiocentesis involves passing a catheter safely into the pericardial space for the purpose of withdrawing pathologic pericardial effusion. The main reason for performing pericardiocentesis is cardiac tamponade. Rarely, diagnostic sampling in the absence of tamponade is an indication. The main contraindication to pericardiocentesis is a volume of effusion that is too small, as seen in this image on the left. This small effusion carries an unacceptable risk of laceration or puncture of the heart with the catheter and stylet. Generally, a volume of effusion that separates the pericardium from the heart by more than one centimeter, as seen on the right, is required for safe pericardiocentesis. Other contraindications include any cause of active blood loss, especially into the pericardial space, where pericardiocentesis may just foster uncontrolled bleeding. The procedure is performed awake. Anesthesia is local, with 2 to 12 cc's of lidocaine based on body weight. One, or preferably two technicians, are necessary for restraint. Clippers and antiseptic materials are needed to aseptically prepare the skin. A 3, 6, or 12 cc sterile syringe, a 22 gauge sterile needle, and lidocaine are used for local anesthesia, and adding a small volume of sterile sodium bicarbonate can decrease the sting of the lidocaine. A pair of sterile gloves and a sterile number 11 scalpel blade are used for making the skin incision. A 6 cc syringe and either a 14 gauge over the needle IV catheter, the blue arrow, or a jugular catheter, the yellow arrow, can be used. We'll use the IV catheter here. 60 cc or 35 cc syringes can be used for removing the effusion. A large bowl is used for disposing of it. Finally, skin glue is used for closing the skin incision. Informed client consent, ultrasound guidance for confirming the best point of entry, and ECG monitoring during the procedure are all essential preparatory steps. Here the patient is restrained in left lateral recumbency facing away from us. Clip the hair widely over the region of the right fifth intercostal space and prepare the skin aseptically. Then, 
infiltrate the skin, subcutis, and intercostal space with lidocaine to the level of the pleura for complete local anesthesia and repeat a final aseptic scrub. Here's a helpful step two. With sterile gloves on, use the number 11 scalpel blade to cut a side hole in the sterile catheter as shown here. This provides two routes of entry in case the catheter tip abuts against the heart during the procedure. Now, a brief animation gives an overview of the procedure. Use the catheter and stylet with 6cc syringe to enter the skin and then advance slowly until a flashback of effusion shows in the syringe. Then, advance another centimeter or two so the catheter is seated in the pericardial space. Advance the catheter off the stylet and withdraw the stylet completely. Then use 35 or 60 cc syringes for aspirating the effusion and then remove the catheter when that's done. Now let's do that with a real patient. Use the sterile number 11 scalpel blade to make a 2 mm stab incision in the skin. Note that the dog is restrained properly but gently and the area should be desensitized so the dog feels no pain. Connect the syringe to the catheter and stylet and place the tip in the skin incision. Advance the catheter, stylet and syringe as a unit gently while applying 1 to 2 cc's of negative pressure. This vacuum creates a flashback of effusion when you enter the pericardial space, as seen here. When the flashback has occurred, advance another centimeter or two first, then advance the catheter off the stylet to the hub using a twirling motion between thumb and forefinger. Finally, withdraw the syringe and stylet together, leaving the catheter in place. Now, using a 35 or 60 cc syringe, gradually withdraw the effusion, typically over 3 to 10 minutes total. Continue to withdraw as long as it flows. It's not necessary to remove all of the effusion. A soft rubbing feeling during the withdrawal, like a wet finger rubbing a microscope slide, typically indicates that the readily accessible fluid has been fully removed and the procedure can be terminated. Typically, several syringefuls will be removed and some 300 to 600 cc's can be expected from a large dog like this boxer. Be sure the effusion is not clotting. If it is, stop the procedure as the catheter tip may be in the heart, not the pericardial space. When fluid flow stops, withdraw the catheter in one motion and close the skin incision using tissue glue. Recheck with ultrasound to see if there has been a recurrence of effusion immediately and typically 12 to 24 hours after the procedure was done. Pearls. Left lateral recumbency and entering ventral to the costochondral junction are essential to minimize the risk of coronary artery laceration and entry into the right atrium, respectively. When the catheter is in place and you remove the stylet, effusion should bubble out of the catheter. Vigorous pulsatile flow indicates that you are in the heart instead and must stop the procedure immediately. The effusion should not clot. If it does, stop because you're either in the heart or there is hemopericardium as occurs in cases of left atrial tear or vigorously bleeding neoplasia. Either way, pericardiocentesis must be terminated to avoid withdrawal of whole blood. Thank you for watching this clinical skills video in veterinary medicine.